Hello everyone, this is Kristen Mangus. Welcome to the replay if you are joining me later on in the day and welcome to everyone joining me live. Um, <clears throat> if you are catching me on the replay, be sure and go ahead and uh, let me know where you're from and uh, tell me if you're new or if you're returning and you can give hearts as well even while you're watching the broadcast. Also, if you will write replay and then write a question and I will address it the next week on the following um, day for that week. So whichever day of the week you do it, I'll address it the next week. And uh, so welcome to our live viewers who are now hopping on. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is going to be my first real live tutorial training. Um, I hope the, uh, the lighting is not too harsh on me, but I made it to where I can teach a tutorial and you can really see my hands and um, hopefully I have a clean space if you saw what everything else was you're, you're gonna go oh my gosh it's messy but it'll be clear so today we're gonna do some jewelry some crochet jewelry and today is crochet Thursday and I've got two questions that I noticed I did not answer during the broadcast last week they didn't say replay before but I want to sweep through there because I didn't tell anybody last week on the broadcast. So I'm going to go ahead and answer those two crochet questions real quick and then we'll get started. Be sure and while you're waiting, grab your um, K hook with five, a six and a half millimeter. It's a ten and a half US. Welcome, Ellie. So glad you're here. Oh, it's raining today in Jersey. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's actually pretty good outside, a little hazy, but um, my lawn person started, uh, we, we hire someone to do it because mm, I don't do that, but uh, he, he came as soon as I was going to start broadcasting and I'm like, ah, so it was going to be loud. So thanks for being gracious and letting me be a little late. Okay, so the tools you're going to need before I answer the questions, we're going to need a K hook. We're going to need some jewelry cutters, jewelry crimpers a round needle nose plier for jewelry or you can have a three-in-one I actually end up using this as well it has a crimper and a cutter and the pliers on it as well and then of course I like to use a metal hook this is a um, a little plug for boy I, I like the boy hook um, for my jewelry they did not tell me to say that they don't even know <laughs> I just like it and then we're gonna have some wider good morning Debbie and um, so this is from this is artistic wire and um, <clears throat> wired bead, and let's see. Uh, I think I've gotten it at the wired bead and I'll have to um, work on getting you guys a link. Um, they used to have a standalone store now, now they're just all online. Yeah, Murphy's Law, Ellie. <laughs> and then um, this one right here is from Parawire. Or it says Parawire, it was $4.99 when I bought it a few years ago. And um, it is, um, let's see. Uh, Vin Vintage, V-I-N-T-A-J, natural brass colored wire. I'm not sure if I had gotten this at Hobby Lobby or what, but this is 920892 if you're looking up a part number, but it's permanently colored non-tarnishing wire, and it's like a, to me it looks copper. I think they call it like a natural brass colored wire. And then this one is a non-tarnishing silver, and this is 15 yards, and I can get um, a necklace or so out of this. I like the big one, though. It's 100. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. This is a 28 gauge. I normally like a 24 or 26. 24 is great, but I can't find it as easy. And then I only have this in at 28 because the color was perfect. So, welcome, Nikki. I'm so glad you're here today. I hope the kids are doing well. Um, I know one of them was teething. So, um, okay, so let's see what else do we need. I'm going to answer the questions real quick if you want to get some supplies and, of course, get your beads as well. Um, if you're going to test with yarn, make sure that the um, yarn that you use um, can go through the bead. If you even have like some um, wire, um, I'm sorry, some crochet thread, um, that's perfect for it too. Um, it might kind of bunch up on you, but at least you can learn the technique and you can cut it out and redo it. Oh, you got a 24 gauge AC more? Oh, that's great. Sorry, it looks like I'm looking off camera. My comments are on one side and my camera's on the other. So, all right, my questions from last week. Do you have uh, do you have to use a thick yarn for the marshmallow crochet baby blanket and hat? The answer, the quick answer is no, you don't. Um, on the marshmallow blanket that I have, the pattern, it's on my website. It's also on Ravelry. Now you can download it, the PDF for a small fee, or you can view it online. But the online, I I believe I have it, and I give an alternate with um, using another um, yarn and hook size. Uh, and I believe I have it as like a number four a medium weight yarn um, And you can also double your yarn or triple your yarn if you wanted to and use the same hook um, Probably wouldn't triple um, But I have not worked out any conversion 
Um, you would just have to work out the numbers yourself, but I haven't worked a conversion for, uh, for the hat. Um, hey, Joanne. I lured you in with jewelry since you rarely crochet anymore, except for jewelry. Okay, so do you already know how to do it? I mean, I may be showing you something you already know, but at least you can have fun and watch me and maybe maybe tell me something or maybe um, learn something. So who knows? We can all t learn from each other, right? Um, okay, the next question was, oh, and that was from Sally um, um, Weiss or Weiss. And um, anyway, she... Um, uh, she asked that question. Okay, so the next one is from Bernadette McKay, and she wanted to know, um, what can I be doing wrong when I crochet round, it doesn't lie flat? Um, there's a couple of different reasons for that. It could be that you are uh, crocheting into, um, <clears throat> you, you could be slipping when you're supposed to be making like a, um, a single crochet. You could be skipping over too far. Um, it could be that it's just curling and it needs to actually just be sprayed a little with water and lay flat to block. There's there's actually kind of some different number of reasons. You have to kind of study whatever the pattern was and um, really look at it. You could be um, going into um, the front of a stitch like down a little too far. It really depends and I'd have to look at it because everybody, it, it's not like an all-encompassing number. You haven't used wire yet, but you're ready to learn. Okay, super. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So those are the only questions. I hope I answer. Sorry. We have kids getting water. Y'all okay? Yeah, I'm getting Okay. Um, how does this lighting look for you guys? Can I just ask y'all? Um, so I'm using a different light, but what I don't like is it gives a reflection. See? Hello. On <laughs> my glasses if I look at it. So, and then I have another light over here. So I'm trying something new today. So, I'm not sure I like it with my glasses. So, anyway. Okay, y'all give me love. Give me likes. Tell me you're that you're there. And my, um, my feed is a little short today. So, make sure. And if I don't answer the question, pop it up there again in case it gets, like, a lot of people talking. It looks fine here. Awesome. Okay. Did, can y'all see that? Hello. Looks like I have weird eyeballs. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. All right. Let me move my notes aside. Okay. So, what we're working on today is jewelry now this is a my button yeah star wars effect it's gonna be fun um the uh this is a button here let me see if i can move down all right this is what we're working on today and we're working on now this is a button one now this is a four layer one and then let me get the others okay check this one out so this one is three so what we're going to be doing is making three strands let me show you what they look like Here's one, which could be a standalone necklace in and of itself. See that? And then I'm gonna, but I'm gonna put three together. I'm sorry, it's really noisy. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna flip down onto my, um, onto my little um, pad here and show you guys um, some of the things that I've made doing this. And then uh, while you're gathering your supplies. Sorry, you're not looking at my face, but let me flip on over. Okay. All right, so this right here is something that I've set up to get ready. And I'm gonna kind of put some things in front of the camera here. Okay, this is one that I did a little tutorial on. It's real simple and it only works with three beads. And so you can catch the video on this. We'll have to put the links in later. And, um, but it kind of looked like a little um, Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse that my daughter wanted me to do it like that. But you can just simply just crochet as many chains as you want and then braid them together in whatever manner you want. So that's just purely up to your creativity. The button necklace that you guys see me wear a lot is this one, and I made it with the 28 gauge wire. Now, it is not okay for kids, like babies. They will pull on it and they will wreck it, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. And I'm fixing a wrecked one that happened to my mom because I made it to her for her and for myself at the time when I had a baby, <clears throat> I made them identical. And so I'm actually having to cut them apart and redo it because my son had like pulled and grabbed on it so much over time. Um, it actually popped one of the these off in a couple of places. And because I wore it, I really wore it when I shouldn't have been because I just loved, loved, loved it. So now I'm actually rebuilding it and it is possible to rebuild it. So what I've done is this is actually the one that I remade already. It's kind of hard to see on this background. Let me see if I can get it on the white. 
see how pretty that looks. It's black. It's hard to see, but it's like a, a glass, a glossy and a matte black. And then so I redid it. And this is what it looks like from the back. Okay. Here's another one. Now, my mom had taken a, a necklace that she had gotten at just a random store. And um, it was not well made. And it kind of broke apart. And so she said, hey, can you make this into one of your style necklaces? So I did. I'm about to give this back to her today. And look how pretty that is. Y'all give a heart if you like that. See how kind of random it is? Like some turquoise and she's got some funky, like some silver and some other um, blues and um, some glass beads. And uh, just, um, so it's a mix of glass and stone and ceramic and metal. It's really cool. If you can catch that from there. I know my hands are in the way, but I'm trying to not mess this up. Okay, and then last ones I want to show are bracelets. Okay, this is the tiger uh, ti tiger tail that I was talking about last week. Okay, so if you'll check the video for that, but I was talking about how this had kind of a springy action, and my daughter had done this. I actually didn't watch her do it, so I may have to like study it and see if it kinks up like that on me. I'm not sure if she changed the direction of her chains, but it becomes like a stretchy kind of bracelet. And I'm actually, it's very comfortable. I've really enjoyed wearing it. It's more comfortable than actually wearing this one, which is a little fancier. And <clears throat> this one, show it on me. See how pretty that is? So but they're all glass beads, and so you have to be careful. And sometimes you can turn around. The cool part is, is if you make it a little too, um, a little too long, you can kind of squish up your beads and make it a little shorter. Or you can, whoops, you can kind of pull it out and do that. I just lost a bead, y'all. Oh, man. All right. Then um, here's another one. Okay, so you can even do wood beads. Okay, so what I'm going to show you today is these wood beads down here. And see how I'm not going to actually have these extras here. Morgan, it's right there, babe. Oh, my sweet girl. Oh, she just got it for me. Oh, thank you. Okay. Ah, oh, she's so sweet. Okay, y'all type in comments. Tell me tell me if you like what you're seeing. I saw some of the stuff flying by. But anyway, this is cool because this is also a bracelet. So I've got this. This is a lobster claw finding. Okay, Oops. see how it has that kind of look to it. And then it fits in here. So that's called a finding. And then here's a toggle clasp type of finding like that. Yeah, runaway beads. So, okay, so I like the toggles a lot, especially for when I'm putting it on... Um, well, actually, I just like them a lot. Um, it's easier for me um, to put it on myself and, and everything. Yay, the sun came back out. Oh, that's great, Ellie. No more rain. Hopefully, it stays that way. Okay, so um, that's that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a soft cloth or something to um, hopefully keep you from runaway beads. It's because I wrecked it. I, I m messed with it. Where did I best find, find the best deals on beads and findings? Um, I found them all over, mostly Hobby Lobby when I'm really careful about shopping on the right week because they alternate their stock and, um, and of what in the jewelry section is on sale, okay? So, all right, so what we wanna do is I wanna set up um, rows of 15 beads, okay? So I'm gonna do, um, a row of 15, three rows of 15. So here I'm alternating. Um, I've got five main beads that are gonna be sort of in the center of my pattern I'm creating. Would a wire necklace or bracelet be too heavy for a magnetic clasp? Good question. I don't think it would be too heavy for say a wooden one. The wooden ones are actually very, these are very light, um, but it depends upon, if you had something like this, it might work. Um, depending upon the bead, like this is a heavy glass bead. And so it, it depends on the security of the, um, or how big your magnet is, is or how expensive it is. Um, it doesn't always mean quality is more expensive, but <laughs> I've found that a lot of times. So it just, it depends. Um, let's see how many I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then I have another one of these. Yeah, here. And then this one, okay, so what I'm doing is I'm actually making this two less because it's super, super big. Do you see these big 
these these big um, beads here they actually have a deal to put the wire straight through the middle or you can grab here so I'm doing something really funky on purpose to show you you can do stuff with different kinds of beads all right so now what I'm doing is I'm gonna do a um, oh gee okay what am I doing I've got these all alternating tell me give me some feedback y'all like what I'm setting up here do you like what this necklace is gonna look like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so now, um, now I've got all of them set up. Is it better to use even or odd numbers of beads on a project? Does it matter? For the bracelet, I don't think it matters for the bracelet, okay? But I did use 11 on each strand here, okay? I like odd numbers because I like to have like I can pick a featured one in the middle and to me it looks more balanced I know that sounds funny to say an odd thing is balanced but when you design and put things out things in odd numbers and threes and clusters or just like one because that's an odd number tend to look better design wise um, I put like see how there's five here it would look kind of odd and to say that little thing is the midpoint so what I do is that's the midpoint Okay, it offers balance. I can make a necklace out of this and it'd be just fine. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys a live choice here. Which one would you like to see on this necklace? Now I'm gonna put this wire, this um, copper wire on, <clears throat> but would you like to see this one with this middle one like here? Or should I put this little, um, it's not real, it's a fake stone. Should I put that stone in here? Or should I leave it off? I'm thinking of leaving it off, but I grabbed it right before I started, and I was like, oh, I wonder if they'd want to see that. Yes or no? Okay, say stone or wood. Y'all type in there, stone or wood, and I will do it. Okay? So, while you're typing, I'm going to go ahead and thread it on. We're going to get our wire out, and then, um, you like the wood? Okay. Yeah, we want to see what it looks like, right? <laughs> okay, we've got a couple of um, of uh, votes here. Okay, so we're gonna take our wire out. I'm pulling out plenty of wire here, and um, actually, what I'm gonna do is, sorry for the noises. Let's put our wire in a little bucket. Okay, so when I pull it, it does that, <clears throat> and we're going to put on. I'm gonna show you the easiest one, which is this here okay so we're going to put on um, in order and thread our bead okay so we're going to go thread the bead y'all let me know um oh it's sunny and warm in new in newfoundland canada i said it in my head i'm not sure if i said it out loud so if i'm repeating myself i'm sorry so now i'm going to load these on here i'm not paying as much attention to the screen so hopefully i'm staying on camera here a lot of time in tutorials, I'll preload stuff and get it all ready and nice, or you don't see this part because I'm cutting it out, so it takes a lot longer to actually do. And uh, tell me if you are actually making this while you're watching, or if you are doing it for later. Kind of type in the in the chat there. And let me know if you're actually um, making it, say making it live or something. It sounds funny to say the word making or something. <laughs> Is there an easier way to thread the beads than to hand string them? Um, I, I, you can also like pick them up, um, people pick them up with uh, other hooks and things. I don't like it when I'm doing uh, this kind of uh, style. Um, you're making it later? Okay, making while watching. Awesome, Ellie. Ellie, have you strung up one line of your beads yet? So let me know if you've strung yours up. I'm gonna go ahead and get my um, my hook out, okay? And then I'm gonna kind of make a, um, a uh, slip knot here. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get all my beads back down in here. Let me, I'm getting my beads into the bucket. Okay, 
trying to make sure I don't wreck anything. Usually I put this way off to the side. So I'm gonna put my beads and my wire in a little tray here. Yeah, I'm gonna put it to my left here because it's a lot easier. All right, so just put on last one. Excellent, okay, we've got our hook, we've got our wire. I'm gonna go around my finger here like this. And this is my version of a slip knot. Everybody does theirs different. I recommend doing it like this though for the wire jewelry. So I'm gonna pull the back over the front and then slightly again. And when that little tip comes over, then I stick my hook in and then I kind of, then I cinch it up, right? Okay, and I can leave that little, that little uh, circle there and that'll be my, my first one, okay? So now what I do is I'm gonna co pull through and, um, okay, you're learning crochet for years but never wire. and. Hopefully this wire is not too thin and um, you can see it on this background. Let me see if I can push it away here. Can y'all see that better? Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put my right finger, or you know, you can do this left-handed too. I'm gonna put my dominant finger on top of the wire to keep it from moving. And then I'm gonna wrap around my other, with a, my other hand around the hook. And now I'm gonna let it lock in here, the back. This is like the little throat area. And then I'm going to pull it through, I can pull down on this here, okay, and go through the hole of what was on the hook. And then I slide it to the back. You have to slide it to this part. This is where your gauge is, this area here, depending upon your hook. Don't do it here, you're gonna regret it because it's gonna get too tight and then you really can't do it, especially because it's not yarn, it's not gonna stretch on you, okay? So now we've got um, one uh, loop here. I've already technically got another one. So we're going to do 17 of these. So we're doing a chain. So I'm going to go two, wrap around, three. Actually, I've got one, two, three, four. Okay, sorry. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14, 15. You may stop at 15 or 16 if you are kind of petite. I like it longer, so I like to go to 17 or even 18. Um, I'm actually gonna do uh, 18 on mine because I want this a little bit longer on this particular necklace. And so, but I have to remember that I do that because I'm gonna double this again later on. Oh, something about a soda. Oh, you talk with your hands too and a friend's always moving your soda so you don't dump it talking. I do the same thing, girl. Okay, so now what I've got is this little easy chain, right? Super easy. Then I'm gonna take on one of my beads. I just load it on and I put it all the way back where my finger is, right? And now I'm just gonna go over again and then hook it on through. We're gonna pull it on through. Pull down and go through that hole. Can y'all see, tell me if you can see this. I'm gonna go through this hole all right, so if you've never crocheted before, that's how you do it. If you have crocheted before, you're like, yawn, Kristen, you're going slow. All right, so now I've got to kind of pull on some slack here and get those beads out of there. <clears throat> so now I've got one is chained on and it's locked in. See that? Okay, now I'm going to chain what I call a blank one. Okay, so it's just the same thing, one chain. So it's just bead one, chain one, bead one, chain one. So now what do I do? I pull another bead but they're already preloaded, okay? So now I'm gonna, as soon as I get the bead on there, I'm gonna wrap around the back and see it's just locked in there. And then I'm gonna finalize it by just pulling that through, okay? So you may have to kind of move and gently work around your, um, your hook. And then now I'm gonna chain an empty one. So now what I've got is, I've got, I'm trying to get that out of your way so you can see it. I've got all the chains, I've got this one. Look, it's not perfect. It doesn't have to be. It's messy, okay? Trust me. Especially when you do the three braid thing, then it really, all your all your mess ups just add to the coolness. Okay, now here's a blank and here's the, the one here. And then now I've got another blank and I'm gonna pull another on. Okay, y'all give me some hearts if this is, um, if you can see what I'm doing and you like what I'm doing, uh, ask me questions if you have questions, Ellie. How are you doing? I know you have to stop to tell me, but is it working for you or do you are you stuck and need help? Uh, 
And while we wait, the way you wear your hat, the way you sip your tea, <laughs> the memory of all that. No, no, they can't take that away from me. The way you smile just beams. This is my background music. The way you sing off key. The way you haunt my dreams. No, no, they can't take that away from me. No, they can't take that away from me. These tunes are brought to you by Christian's Repertoire. <laughs> so far, so good, Ellie. Way to go, girl. Okay, so I am going... I just don't like the silence. Do y'all like the um, the new songs in my, my videos that background... Um, the keyboard playing. My wire hit the floor. Let the wire hit the floor. Let the wire hit the floor. I'm sorry. I make it look easy. Well, I tell you what though. Here's the key. This wire is 28 gauge. When I get to this wire, which is, what is this one? 26 gauge. It's a little harder. All right. And then when I get to the 20, um, 24 gauge, it's actually, um, it, it does get a little more rigid and, and difficult. Not that it's difficult, but like, so the lower the number, the harder it is. And the higher the number, the more flexible the wire is. If you wanted to do a ring, you would do say like 18. All right, you really like how I'm locking on the beads? I always wondered how that was done. Yeah. Yeah, that's really it. And then you can decide, like, so if you've got a really big bead um, next to a really small bead, you can just chain more in between. Just realize that if you um, if you chained a whole bunch in the beginning and you've got too much length, then you just can pull out or try and pull out backwards, which is harder, these chains here, um, or you'll have to work them in. And we'll, we'll talk about that when we do that later. Okay, so I am almost finished. A Ellie, how are you doing? Show the misbehaving wire who's boss. Yeah, right. Right, Lori? Get it, girl. Oh, yeah. 24 is, uh, yeah, stiff but workable. You will enjoy the 24. I'm telling you, it, it, it can take a heavier beating. So, it's good. I, I don't like the 28, personally. It's only because I love the color, right? And color is king, especially when we buy our yarn, is it not? Okay, so I did 18 to begin with, right? So now I'm at the end. I've done one chain. I didn't say it to you guys. So, but now you'll do 17 um, and just do the same as you did before. And if you forgot, if you forgot, go count it. No big deal. Okay, so I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Did I do too many? All right, hold on. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, so I did 18. Yay. Okay, Ellie, yeah, definitely post it. Post it in this thread because everybody would love to see what you did. Okay, I'm going to just simply on one. I'm going to have done my last one. I'm going to pull on it, right? Okay, then I'm going to just take this off, grab my cutter, and sometimes people use like little fingernail clippers. So I just pull it out a couple of inches and then cut it. And then just this other wire can just go away. And now I've got one here. So see, you're done on that. And then you just set it aside and wire up your next line. Now, for the effort of time, I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do the one that we all wanna know. What does this look like? So I'm gonna flip this around. Okay, actually, no, I'm not. I'm so sorry. Okay, I was gonna flip it to have um, more um, more time here, but um, I, you need to see the white. Okay, so that sounded funny to say more time, but anyway, I'm distracted, so. Okay. Um, Oh, let me explain. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so this one is, 
This one is two less than what I have been doing, okay? So the only reason why I'm doing that is because these are super big, right? And I'm gonna go through the middle on these, okay? So it's actually gonna have a middle wire. Now, um, unless you guys tell me, tell me if you want me to go, actually, I'll change the, the design right now if you want. I can either wire them through the middle here. This will be fun. I like the interactive, what do y'all think? I can go through the middle here, which is actually proving difficult, um, or I can attach them like this. Do y'all want me to attach them, say, angle? Or do you want me to attach them center? Everybody vote. <laughs> You can write angle or center or give me give me love if you want it on the angle and give me like if you like the middle. Does it sound like I have a preference? <laughs> Small color bead in middle of long one. Mm. Okay, you like center? Middle, angle. I got, we got two for the middle and one for the angle. Oh man, those hearts and things flew by and I didn't notice it. Center and Ellie's a genius. <gasps> oh, oh, I just caught what she's saying. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Hello. Yes, I know what you're saying. You're saying do that. Oh, neato, neato burrito. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Because I actually have more. I have more of these funky beads. I mean, I have other beads. Look at this. All right, hold on. Do y'all like these beads? Um, that. And actually, it would be um, it would look like this. It would look like this and not from the side. Because see, the hole is like this. And so it would be vertical. Like that. Like it. Okay, well, I can't lay it like that. Which one? Long bead or small bead? Everybody, vote. Long bead or small bead? That's a small bead. And it'll go to the side. And then, I'm not sure I have enough of these long ones, but we can try it. Do y'all like the long one? It's really kind of cool, though. It hides the wire. All right, I'm gonna do the long. Ellie said the long originally, so let's just do it. Her side, long bead, okay. We'll put these little doohickeys on the end here where I was going to use them. I'm switching up this design, man. You guys are brilliant. Okay, I need one more, okay. So now, what do I have? I have one, two, I'm gonna count that as two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh my gosh, Ellie. You're brilliant. Hearts for Ellie. Woo woo. All right, everybody. Give her some love. All right, thread it up. One, two. Y'all be praying for me that this goes through. Okay, so we got to start this one. Then we're going to load on the second one. It This, this may take me a little longer, y'all. Load up the second, pull it through. All right. Gee. All right, because it's flexible, I think this is gonna work. So hold on, bear with my big fat hands here. I think what I need to do is pull it back and then push it in. Oh. All right, hold on. Oh. I wish that I had some theme music for y'all to listen to. Da 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 Oh, Ellie, this is so cool. Okay. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Three cheers. My, <laughs> can I be real honest with you guys? My hands are sweating. I'm so excited. <laughs> Tweezers, I know, that's such a good idea. If I only had them right next to me, and ju jewelry people should have tweezers, and honestly, I don't use beads small enough to need them most of the time. So, yeah. 
What's going to happen is I'm going to wreck the beginning of my wire and I'm going to cut it. And so I may need to um, adapt as I go here and cut the wire because now I have to thread it in here. And so what happens is because I'm bending it back, it's, it's what I call, it's putting a strain on the wire and it's crimping it. And I don't want to strain it because the necklace later needs to be um, supportive, right? We don't want it to be weak. Look at that. Ooh, Ellie. <laughs> I'm just a little excited. <laughs> All right. Oh. Okay, girls. All right. Or, or men, if they're joining me. I'm going to go ahead and clip it because it's getting to where I can't deal Oh, please don't tell me this won't work. Ellie, are you starting on your second one? Here's the deal on beads. Sometimes you have to go through the other one or just do the back side. And be careful how you, you put them on if they need to be turned a certain way. But mine don't. And I love the wood necklace. And by the way, wood necklaces are great in the summer and fall because they're lightweight in the summer and for the fall they just have those those nice qualities of being the right color. <laughs> Ellie's awesome. Ellie, man, y'all give Ellie some love, man. Oh gosh, this is so beautiful. I wish you could see it in person. I know it's nice and um and and the reason why I picked this is because I like some iconic pieces and so I knew that it would translate on the video well um, with the white background. Oh my gosh, y'all. Like, you could just have a necklace that was just that. Yeah? But we're going to make it super fantastic. Okay, you're too busy watching me, Ellie? Okay. So, here's the deal. I wrecked this first part. And, and I actually did, did more wrecking. But because I have something that has a lot more wire, I can go ahead and cut that off. All right, so now let's go ahead and do our um, our stuff. I'm gonna go faster for the effort of time. I only have really another 15, 20 minutes here. It takes me about, um, once I have it all um, laid out, like if, when I, I haven't timed myself in a long time, but when I first started, I think my best time was like 45 minutes when I had it all laid out to do a complete necklace. Okay, so see, I messed up. I pulled my chain, uh, I, I pulled my um, slip stitch really tight. So I need to, I, I'm excited, I'm going too fast. I need to slow down, take a break, and do that. And then that's what you have to do a lot of times with crochet too, like if you're stressed about something. Um, I gave someone this advice the other day. If you are, um, if you're finding that your tension is just too tight, Go and take a break or get out your um, your crochet, your knitting project, like a no-brainer kind of project, and just um, just start going like on a straightaway. Something real simple and easy. Switch back and forth. And then if your tension is wrecked on that other project, it may not be a big deal. Maybe it's just a blanket for your house. You know, it's not a gift for somebody. So especially if you're doing something difficult, switch back and forth between the difficult to the easy. You don't have to have multiple projects, but just like two of them is nice. Just a no brainer. All right. Anyone else just joining us? Um, let us know if you're new and where you're from. You guys who are already here, um, you know, be sure and chat with each other. Are you in my loom knit and craft club? Um, did you join us from there? Did you join me from the page? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna chain one on here. Let's lock in. Sorry for the noise. Blank. Be sure and get that one in there to chain. Okay, so even with the larger one, here we go. This is the larger one. You just pull it on through. Okay, now what I do is I actually kind of, if I'm in a hurry or it doesn't matter, then I don't worry about it, but I can kind of pull and tug and get it sort of centered up a little bit on the back here, and then I'll chain another one, okay? 
Now, <clears throat> this big one is coming, okay? I'll chain one more, okay? Now I'm gonna get the big one, ready? So I'm gonna pull through and I'm gonna chain and when I do, I'm gonna kind of tug on this back to give myself actually a little bit more wire to come through the middle here so that when I chain it, it's going to be hopefully in the center or somewhere near it, okay? Can you guys see that? It's sort of in the middle, middle. okay? And then I'm gonna make sure to get this guy over on the side here before I really finalize doing it. So now I'm gonna flip through. Okay, so now I'm in the middle. So I'm gonna chain until I get past this. That's critical, otherwise you're gonna have this weird um, lumpy bump. <laughs> I'm gonna chain a couple. All right, see how it's missing it? And then now we're gonna uh, chain on this other one. Y'all still with me? Make sure, okay, Ellie's the last one in common it. Okay, so now I'm gonna get the next one. we have um, a good connection please let me know by tapping the screen if you like what you're seeing or love what you're seeing let me know chain an extra I'm gonna try and go fast y'all aren't just totally okay good I'm glad you're there um, we get one more so I'm kind of chaining up a couple to get to this middle one before I go and then let's pull it on through again. I'm pulling some slack, I'm pulling through, get it to the middle, chain a couple. Thanks, Betty. Thanks, Lori. Get past it. And, and it's messy and it's okay because it's not gonna be by itself. It's going to be um, trapped with other strands. And so this is to get it to spread out easier, right? Okay, one. Two, lock it in. One more. This is gonna be super long, so I, I really shouldn't have done 18 earlier. That's my bad, because I haven't done one this long. I've done some really big ones, but not this long. And so, um, I don't need as many chains on the end. One. Two, three, four, five. Yes, Joanne. Six. I did on the last ones, but not on the first. Seven, eight, nine. I'm just going to do ten and look at it. Okay, so now what I've got, I've got this really cool effect, and I'm going to kind of mess with it. Okay. Get it all right facing. Uh, okay, awesome. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Um, I'm not sure you can see that in my light. If I don't like it, needs to be adjusted. And then, um, so what I can do is I can compare it. Whoops, sorry. I didn't mean to hit the camera. Um, I can compare it to this one. And so what I do is I center up my beads to be centered with this one. And then I kind of look at the rest of this stuff and see how it lines up. So to pull it to the side, actually I have the same length. So this is gonna be a much longer necklace. So because it's about the same length, see I'm, I made it, because remember I only did 13, not 15. So I eliminated some to make up for the fact that I was gonna to have to add extra chains. So actually I can do 18 on the other side. Thanks Ellie. Okay, I lost my hook here so let's, um, Move this. I'm gonna fix it. I said I did 10, yeah, 10. Very elegant. Okay, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Pull it through, cut it, side of the side. Man, okay, so, oh, I just did that. Okay, um, so you know what? I'm gonna finish this necklace because I know you guys wanna see this necklace. I was gonna braid together one that was already done with three, but don't y'all wanna see this finished out? I do. So let me um, 
count this up. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I am missing a bead. Where is that bead? That darn bead. It's like that darn cat. Normally, I don't have all this stuff that I'm kind of wrecking off to the side. Okay, one, two. All right, I had some other beads. Sorry, so that was that 15? Was that 15, y'all? Two, I will add extra change if I have to, but I wanna see what this looks like, and I bet you do too. Y'all give me some love, man. I'm gonna try and race through this. And so on the wood beads, they're a little, I'm sorry, I'm off camera. The wood beads are a little temperamental sometimes. And sometimes I have to enter from the opposite side because it's like, um, it's like scratchy inside the way they routed out the hole. So you have to be gentle with your wire, uh, but, um, you know, kind of jiggle the bead. <laughs> the, the glass beads are, you know, excellent. And, uh, and the ceramics and stuff because they really, they work well. But with the wood, they have to... Um, do it build it different yes you definitely have to try wire crocheting betty I, I tell you what it can be addicting and it can be even more expensive <laughs> than, than with the yarn but man i tell you what these are the some of the best quick gifts so if you need a present um they make um they make great teacher gifts you can even just do one strand and make um several teacher gifts um, you know, or stocking stuffers for your friends, I will say that you need to let them know to um, either hang them on a special hanger in their closet or wherever, or lay it flat um, to store it. Laying it flat is the best because it doesn't put any stress on any part. And um, they are great pieces of jewelry, but they do have some finickiness to them, especially if they're wire beads. I mean, they're the glass beads because you don't want them to break. Isn't that cool? Oh my gosh, y'all, oh my gosh, I am so excited, I know what I'm wearing this weekend, <laughs> two, three, whoop, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Oh, I did a 19. Okay, okay, so if you get it, let's, that's good that we're showing a mess up. Okay, watch, see? I'm blazing and stuff, right? So if I if I just noticed it, then just kind of back it out real careful and then um, flatten out the wire. Your friend makes jewelry. You're going to have to reach her uh, crochet to crochet and add this to her inventory on Etsy. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> oh, teach. Do you have to teach it to her? Yeah. Um, I sold these. Uh, I had some jewelry pieces that I actually sold on Etsy. In fact, I had someone commission me for some uh, using some real turquoise. I went out and sought the right color. There's lots of different kinds, which I didn't know. And um, so I went and bought them at a specialty store. And I it was like a $300 commission job. So it was actually pretty pretty sufficient and tr pretty big job and um, because of the way I had to buy them I actually ended up um, getting some extra she wanted a, an earring set and a bracelet as well and um, so uh, I actually had have had some extra the turquoise beads from that purchase and um, made some earrings uh, some extra earrings for myself or a friend or whatever and and I even um, kept some to make so I didn't buy a huge quantity but you know a couple extra beads works for earrings real nice and the earrings psh, if you're really trying to make a bunch of gifts for somebody for people stocking stuffers or whatnot once you get into making the earrings you really end up you kind of can fly and go really fast so it is good for those last minute projects I tell you what As we all know, I mean, you can only crochet or knit up so so fast. 
but we, we like handmade stuff and we like to give it to our friends and loved ones and and other people that we appreciate but you know sometimes we just don't have time But yeah, once you can make these, totally make it in your Etsy shop. And by the way, I love when people ask me if they can use my patterns in their Etsy shop. As long as they're not, I mean, but you don't have to. As long as they're not, um, like, making them in mass quantities. Like, you know, it's like a big company and they're, like, making them on machines or something. Other than that, I'm totally excited if y'all want to use any patterns of mine. Not, not the pattern and print the pattern and sell it, but I mean, like, make up the, the project and sell the project on Etsy or whatever st store you want. So if you just let me know, just cause I like to know, then that would be awesome. I think I accidentally have an extra bead on here. Hold on, hold up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, that's funny. So I accidentally had wired that other one I was looking for earlier, so I'm not even gonna use it. All right, isn't that funny? Okay. So let's do the 15, one, oh, 18, two, three, four. Y'all want me to put this on uh, YouTube? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Oh, we got some thumbs up for YouTube. Um, yeah, and hey, by the way, okay, so on my Facebook page, you can click on, on the Good Night Kisses uh, page that you're on. If you click on video, um, you can see them, and it, it does like more like a live feed, so like comments will appear like naturally and stuff. So, But if you go in the main, main feed and click on comments, they're all out of order and wonky. But I noticed if you watch them um, on the on the YouTube on the video page, so if you're on my page and you click video, um, you'll see it that way. Isn't this awesome? Okay, so <clears throat> I can set this aside. I don't need it anymore. And now what I need is my findings. Okay, so this is from the jewelry shop. It was a dollar ninety nine at the time. Um, it's a toggle clasp and it comes with two sets if you're interested in this particular one it's 396036L I don't know if it's still made it was when I bought it and um, made in China Hobby Lobby.com so you can probably buy it on in their store or something similar so I have two sets I don't need this one so I'm gonna set it aside and I have one two right so let's set this aside now what I want to do is um, braid them together let me get a better deal here it's longer all right so now what we're going to do is line them up i like to put um the middle one the big one in the middle okay um lay it out how i want it and it's all going to get intermixed so then i turn it and then um get it kind of lined up okay make sure that they're even and then start pinching them together on the end and flatten it out, okay? Now, I have too much of another one. What I can do is know that this was longer and then I can weave it around more. So I'm gonna pinch these two together and swirl it around, okay? Until it's real tight. Can y'all see that? Okay. Just keep going around and around and around until the ends are braided up together. You can even go ahead and trim that. Okay, all right, make sure you have a few inches on here, okay? Because you're gonna need it. And then you're gonna start braiding. All right, now, I actually like to hold it vertical and do it, I cannot do that uh, y'all want to see my mess and I'll just hold it vertical. Would y'all like to see how I really hold it instead of just on the, um, on the thing here? Tell me vertical if you want me to, otherwise I'm going to start braiding. So I'm holding it here and then I'm just flipping it around to braid it. Okay. This main side here, the, the beginning side, 
you're just doing a flat braid. When I say flat, I mean you're not bending the wires over themselves and twisting, twisting them. You, you want my way? Okay, vertical. So once I get to that point, I'm going to, this is easier to do right now, and then um, I will hold it vertical here in a second. Okay, now that I'm where the beads are, I'll hold it vertical. You get to really see my mess. Hang on, let me get, grab some coffee and sip it. Hang on. I'm getting parched. Okay. You get to see the mess. Hold, please. I'm moving some things out of the way. All right, here we go. Hey, look at that. See my mess? Here's my funky light I used today. All right, let's see if I can do it vertical here for you. Okay, normally I hold it up way up high. I don't know if I can do this and you'll see it. So I'm just gonna trust and hope you can. All right, we're gonna leave off. Okay, so basically what I do is just hold it up and then I'm like, okay, I get myself confused. So over, over, over. I know that I have extra on this one, so I may try and weave it a couple extra times. Now what happens is, is then they get, they get caught. So this is more like a, let's mess with it kind of thing. Over, over. I have to make sure I'm actually braiding and not just moving something on top of something. Okay. So see how it's kind of messy and hard to see? It's easier when I hold it vertical because I can tell what it's going to look like intertwined better. I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but it does to me. Yeah, like hair braiding. But then you have to make adjustments and go around big features. Okay, and so now I'm at the end. And so before I finish braiding the end, I'm going to look at my work and I'm gonna say, here, let me reposition here. Okay, so now I'm gonna look at it and go, do I like this? Do I not like this? I don't really like how it's laying out. Maybe I need to redo it. So I might even like go back through and decide, oh, I want to do something different this time because they're a little funky. Did y'all like, tell me if you like it or if you want me to say redo. Vote redo if you want to see my alternate. I'm gonna try something I've never done before. So tell me redo if you want me to redo it or give me a love button if you love what it looks like, okay? This is what it looks like so far. I'm not a fan. It's gonna look like this and that's okay. Y'all, give me feedback. The big ones are angled, right. So I'm thinking, okay, redo. I gotta vote for redo, so I'm just gonna go with them because they're going with my gut. <laughs> I also wanna try something different. So sometimes you just have to try different things, right? Redo, okay. That's what's so cool about it, right? And, and this isn't like regularly ripping out your work. Your work is still there. We're just, this is just the finishing, right? This is like, if we had seams to put in or the ends to put in and we have to make it look pretty or we have to sew the pieces together or something. Okay, so now I don't do this vertical. I actually untwist it like flat because it can get caught and actually it's caught here. So let me work it out. You do. Love what it looks like, wanna see another. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, is if I don't like my second option, I can go back. Or I can do another one. Like, it's all good. That's why it's called crafting, right? We are crafting. We make happy mistakes and we move on, don't we? Okay, ladies. All right. So I think this looks cool kind of by itself. And I want to see what it looks like when I just um, weave in the first part, let this dangle, and then weave in the last part. And so it kind of does this little scoopy thing. So I'm going to kind of weave this in capture the first one then I'm gonna kind of weave these two together for a moment okay and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna capture let's get this in here all right now I'm gonna capture this one differently so 
So what it did is it's making this hang down. Oh, good gracious. Hang on. I got to play with this. See how it's flat? Have all three diff necklaces different lengths. Okay, that's a thought. So let's see if we like this one. And then um, I could try that option. All right, hold, please. Technical difficulties. Okay, which way am I going? This way. This way. This way. All right, so there's this one, which now that I see it, I don't like it. No, maybe I do. Watch this. What do y'all think of that? No? I don't like that. Three necklaces. Do y'all like three necklaces? I may go back to the original and then what I can do is I'll show you how to manipulate it. Okay. I like the live feedback. Yes, I know how to do this and yes, I could just smoosh it all up and show you that way, but it's really kind of fun to go together about it. So because I did this very weighty, like this one is a heavier weight chain and this is a, a medium and then this is a light. I think what your idea is of putting them together as three different sizes is going to work really nicely. So let's do that. So let's gonna, we're gonna let this hang. I'm gonna pull this one out a little bit longer, okay? Right? See, and how this is braided, okay? And then this one's going up here. I'm gonna pull that out to be a little shorter than this one, okay? And then this one's gonna be even shorter. We'll check that out, okay? So this is actually, a group effort project that I cannot fully take credit for. Thank you, Ellie. I think that was Ellie who said that, Joanne. Thanks, yeah. Let's check this out. And then I'll put it on me and then we can really see what it looks like. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm off camera now. All right. Look at this. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that fun? Let's see what it looks like. This is the best one. I agree. Flipping it around. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, twisting it around. Now we're gonna put the finding on. Go ahead and um, make sure this is real good. I know Ellie, you probably stopped with your own necklace long ago. Okay, I'm gonna slide it around. Ellie, you'll have to come back to this. Now we're gonna put on the finding, okay? I need to find my finding. Here it is. And here we go. Urban Chic, exactly, exactly. And it's wooden and it's like super lightweight and I can wear it this summer. Okay, well, it's still summer. Of course, in your Australia, you're like in your winter, I think. Okay, so um, yeah, it makes a large bead stand out, especially with the cool effect that she did. If I had done them on the diagonal, it would have been fine if I didn't put the bead in the middle. But we didn't choose that method, and I think it would be cool because guess what? I can do that on this. I also have this, so I can do it on the diagonal on these. So, yay. All right, so um, when I put it on, on my necklace, I, I'm right-handed, and so I like to look at the necklace. Like, this is the front of the necklace here, and so now I'm at the back, like if I'm fastening. So I like to put this part, because I like to put it through here. So right-handed, I put the, the flat toggle on this side or like my lobster claw on that side. And then I'm going to um, use my needle nose pliers and I'm gonna take it and I'm going to pull it around. And I have a tutorial on this so you can see it better, okay? It's more clear than this live video. And I'm gonna make it really long. So, and I'm actually just kind of making this a messy join because it's so quick. But once I get it twisted around how I want, no, normally I do it like really consistent and everything, but I'm actually making this necklace look a little messier on purpose. So I'm gonna clip it, okay? And then I'm gonna crimp it. Now, when you crimp it, what you're trying to do is flatten out that rough piece so that it's smooth and it's not gonna hook on anyone's uh, clothing or skin. 
So that worked really well. Now we're gonna do the next one. I'm trying to hurry this up a little bit because I've gotta go here in a couple minutes, uh, meet someone for lunch. I have another daughter with another birthday. Yes, I do. <laughs> and we are doing a birthday lunch today. All right, so now I've got my um, pliers and pulling and going around and around to get it the tightest I can. I usually start it so that it's tight and then I'll kind of go around by hand and it's easier, first of all, I can't do this by hand with the other wires. The 28 gauge is allowing me to do that. So I kind of do things with this wire that I don't do with the other ones. Okay, and then now I'm gonna go and, thank you, Ellie. Uh, I'm gonna cut this off, crimp. And if you have the all-in-one, which I will show you, if you have a cutter, sorry, this is what I'm doing here. If you, I'm not sure if it'll focus, but you see how this is a raw edge, so I'm going to take this crimper and squish it. But you have to be careful how you squish it, and sometimes you end up having to cut it again, but don't cut the wire that's holding it up. You want to cut the end, right? But if you squish it too much, you may have, you may wreck your entire necklace So um, and, like, break the wire. So we don't want to do that. I use my three-in-one. Uh, tool because it has a flatter crimper thing on it and I actually like it but when you do that you have to be careful that you are not cutting it because if I go to this section here it's a cutter if I go to this middle section it's a crimper okay awesome the best test is with my fingers right and see how that feels. Sorry, that's my water running in for my ice maker. And there it goes. <laughs> okay, all right, so I now have it. I'm gonna put this necklace, take this other one off that I've got on, and I'm gonna put this one on, and then you guys can see it. You'll actually, we'll see it all at the same time. Okay, ready? I'm getting myself ready. <laughs> I don't have any lipstick on, but. Oh, how, what do y'all think? What do y'all think of it? Isn't that cool? And then I can kind of manipulate them until I have it the way I want it. Oh, I'm sorry, Debbie. You can, you can test it with like a cotton ball or something. Do y'all like that? Yay! Oh, I love it. It's so nice and lightweight. And um, and I don't feel like it's like super heavy on my body. It's beautiful. <sighs> oh my gosh. Ah, I love it. I'm going to wear it to lunch. <laughs> yes. Thank you all so much. Oh my goodness. I could not have done it today without you. This is a super cool feature and I love my live girls today. And guys, if you join me, you have to speak up. So um, anyway, oh my goodness. Thank you all for joining me today. I love it. I hope that you try it yourself. Please, if you do, will you come back and I'm sorry, I had a phone call come in. So if you make this or make, make a necklace, if you put it in the comments, but if you'll also share it on our Facebook page, I will share it with everybody. Any work that you ever do, loom knit, crochet, needle, crafting, and if I love it and I just want to share or just share whatever you had to say, I may just hit the share button and, and say, look at this, okay? So I would love, love, love for y'all to do that. Thank you, Bernadette. I'm so glad. And if you didn't join me in the beginning, I answered your question from last week. So um, you're welcome, Joanne, for the tutorial. Yes, you need to go raid your daughter's bead stash. <laughs> um, I also keep something like this to hold some of my beads in. Um, let me show you real quick before I get off the phone here. This is some of the earrings that I had started with that were left over from the turquoise thing. So um, anyway, just wanted to um, show you what those are. You could even play with, um, I'm still playing with learning how to use a, um, this is actually a stretchy, um, uh, this is actually a stretchy elastic cording, and so I'm working on learning how to make a stretchy 
a bracelet maybe out of that. So just have fun and experiment. Um, I keep my tools in this hard plastic container. Um, it's a, I think they're called Rock and Surf from Tupperware. I don't know if they still make them or not. But anyway, be sure and catch me on YouTube too. I will try and upload this video soon on my YouTube channel, which is Good Knit Kisses. So you want to go to uh, youtube.com slash goodknitkisses and then um, be sure and subscribe to that and hit the um, button to make sure you get notifications. So, oh, thank you, Pam. Thank you so much. And I'm glad you don't mind all my talking and stuff. I give tips in between and just, I just like to have fun. You love the button one? Me too. That's one of my favorites. Everybody gives me compliments. Bag a button at Hobby Lobby. The same, um, the, you know, get the, the wire crochet um, uh, from there too. And... Um, you can actually sell it off your body if you make a whole bunch of them. Just know that these buttons, though, there's a tutorial for it. These buttons are a little rough, and so you might want to, like, sand them down a little bit um, or just don't. And then there, it was a little itchy the first time I did it, but now I, I do it and I, I don't notice anymore. So you have to be careful about the buttons you do. Anyway, y'all have a great day. Thanks for joining me. Bye, y'all. Happy crochet and crafting.